Hello and a very warm welcome to KSG News. This is your stop for all the latest to help you with your preparations for your examinations. We begin with the current affairs relating to the GS Paper 3 that relates to energy, a historic tripartite agreement for establishing India's first ever geothermal field development project in Leh has been signed with Ladakh Lieutenant Governor R.K. Mathur terming it a step towards achieving the goal of carbon neutral Ladakh. The pact was signed between Union Territory Administration Ladakh, Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council, Leh and Oil and Natural Gas Corporation that is ONGC Energy Centre on the 6th of February. Now what is this all about? In phase 1 of this pilot project, 1 megawatt power generation capacity shall be generated and 100% free power shall be supplied to the general public. ONGC Energy Center is the implementing agency for this pilot project. The phase 2 shall involve deeper and lateral exploration of geothermal reservoir by drilling optimal number of wells and setting up a higher capacity demo plant in Ladakh, while phase 3 shall be a commercial project as per discovered capacity. The signing of the MOU with ONGC for the first geothermal project in India is a promising initiative towards innovative and sustainable development of Ladakh and also a step towards achieving the goal of carbon neutral Ladakh. The energy from this project will give round the clock power supplies and the hot water from this spring could be used for space heating and establishing hot swimming pools to attract tourists. With this project, Ladakh enters a new era of development and emphasizes on advocating the vocal for local concept for making Ladakh a self-sustainable region. In some more news related to the GS Paper 3, this is to do with climate change and disaster. More updates on the Uttarakhand Glacier Burst. The glacier burst at Uttarakhand is an outcome of climate change in the Himalayan region, which is warming up faster than the other mountain regions. According to experts, the incremental use of reinforced concrete cement structures replacing the traditional wood and stone masonry is accelerating a heat island impact in the mountain region. There are more than 8,000 glacial lakes in the Himalayas, of which 200 are classified as dangerous. The glacier collapse at Joshi Mutt on 7 February led to a massive flood in the Dholi Ganga River and caused large scale devastation in the upper reaches of the ecologically fragile Himalayas. Glacier retreat and permafrost thaw are projected to decrease the stability of mountain slopes and increase the number and area of glacier lakes. There is high confidence that current global glacier shrinkage caused new lakes to form and existing lakes to grow in most regions, for instance in South America. The IPCC report says that the climate change has altered the frequency and magnitude of the natural hazards. The scientists reported with medium confidence that in some regions snow avalanches involving wet snow have increased while the rain on snow floods has also increased at lower elevations in springs. The recent assessment report called the HEMAP report facilitated by ICIMOD has also pointed these out. The report shows that temperatures are rising in the Hindu Kush Himalayan region and the rise in global temperature will have more impact in the Himalayan region due to elevation-dependent warming. If the world can keep the temperature rise to below 1.5 degrees Celsius in the HKH region, it would translate to at least a rise of 1.8 degrees Celsius and in some places above 2.2 degrees Celsius. In some more updates for the GS Paper 3, this relates to disease. India has become the third topmost country in the world in terms of the number of COVID-19 vaccine doses administered. The Union Ministry had told this only the United States and the United Kingdom remain ahead of India. The Union Health Ministry of India has said that 12 states in India have vaccinated more than 2 lakh beneficiaries each. Uttar Pradesh alone accounts for 6,73,542 of all vaccinated beneficiaries. Now, there has been a sustained increase in the number of beneficiaries being vaccinated every day. In another significant development, the country has reported less than 80 daily deaths in the last 24 hours. This is the lowest in nine months. The country's total COVID-19 active cases is 1.48 lakhs, which consists of 1.37% of India's total infections. The ministry has also said that 81.07% of the new recovered cases are observed to be concentrated in six states and union territories. 
Kerala has reported the maximum number of single-day recoveries with 6,178 newly recovered cases. The ministry has said that 84.83% of the daily new cases are from six states and union territories. Kerala has reported the highest daily new cases at 5,942. It is followed by Maharashtra with 2,768, while Karnataka reported 531 new cases. Five states and union territories accounted for 69.23% of the daily deaths. Maharashtra saw the maximum casualties, that is 25. Kerala follows with 16 daily deaths and Punjab reported five casualties. 17 states and union territories have not reported any deaths in a span of 24 hours. These include Haryana, Goa, Jammu and Kashmir, Jharkhand, Puducherry, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Lakshadweep, Assam, Manipur, Sikkim, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Ladakh, Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh and Tripura. Moving on some other news for the GS Paper 3, this relates to space technology. The first Arab space mission, the UAE's Hope Probe, is expected to reach Mars's orbit on the 9th of February, making it the first of three spacecraft to arrive at the Red Planet this month. The UAE, China and the US all launched projects to Mars last July, taking advantage of a period when the Earth and Mars are nearest. If successful, the wealthy Gulf state will become the fifth nation to ever reach Mars, a venture time to mark the 50th anniversary of the unification of the UAE, with the Chinese mission due to become the sixth the following day. Hope, known as Al Amal in Arabic, will orbit the planet for at least one Martian year or 687 days, while the Tianwen-1 from China and the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover from the US will both land on Mars's surface. Only the US, India, the former Soviet Union and the European Space Agency have successfully reached the red planet in the past. After blasting off from Japan last July, the HOPE mission now faces its most critical and complex maneuver, according to Emirati officials, with a 50-50 chance of successfully entering a Mars orbit. The HOPE probe is designed to provide a comprehensive image of the planet's weather dynamics. It is also a step towards a much more ambitious goal, building a human settlement on Mars within 100 years. HOPE will also use three scientific instruments to monitor the Martian atmosphere and is expected to begin transmitting information back to Earth in September 2021 with the data available for scientists around the world to study. China's Tianwen-1, or Questions to Heaven, has already sent back its first image of Mars, a black-and-white photo that showed geological features including the Schiaparelli crater and the Vals Marineris, a vast stretch of canyons on the Martian surface. China hopes to land the 240kg rover in May in Utopia, a massive impact basin on Mars. Its orbiter will last for a Martian year. The 5-ton Tianwen-1 includes a Mars orbiter, a lander and a solar-powered rover that will for three months study the planet's soil and atmosphere, take photos, chart maps and look for signs of past life. NASA's Perseverance, which is set to touch down on the Red Planet on 18th of February, will become the fifth rover to complete the voyage since 1997 and all so far have been American. It is on an astrobiology mission to look for signs of ancient microbial life and will attempt to fly a 1.8 kilogram helicopter drone on another world for the first time. The mission is set to last at least two years. That's all for today in the KSG News for Aspire and stay tuned to KSG India for more informative videos.